What is going on everyone? Welcome back to GEA Fan TV, the show that keeps you up to date with everything that's happening in the world of GEA football and hurling. And of course today we'll be talking just about football, no hurling this weekend and yeah, what a weekend of action. Everything that people predicted pretty much happened. No real shocks this weekend. Donegal, Dublin and Kerry all winning their provincial championships pretty easily. Um, no real shocks in the qualifiers either. There's one or two like little kind of surprises here and there. Um, but more or less in the whole in the overall swing of things um, you know what happened pretty much came through but we'll start off by talking a bit about Donegal um, and the main question I want to ask to you guys is are they all Ireland contenders because obviously they comfortably dispatched for Mana and um, they are now of course also champions for the first time since 2014 um, what a massive result this is for Donegal you know you know huge victory fantastic play in this game and they go into the Super 8 Championship full of confidence, they've abandoned this defensive style of football, they're playing very attacking and Declan Bonner has done a fantastic job to get this sort of Donegal team that does have good experience with the likes of Ryan McHugh and Paddy McBrearty but it's got other good young players coming through as well and certainly in the next couple of years if Donegal can continue on this track you'd expect them to be very very close to an All-Ireland title if not at least winning one. And yeah, I mean, certainly you'd probably have to say that Dublin and Kerry are the top two counties in the country. But in that like small little bracket just underneath, that's probably got the likes of Mayo, Galway, Tyrone. Um, you probably have to put Donegal in that bracket uh, for now as well. The only big, of course, um, difference is that Donegal have yet to really play one of the big boys this year. They've had a pretty comfortably ri a comfortable ride through in Ulster. They've managed to win an Ulster title without playing at Armagh without playing Monaghan without playing Tyrone um, I'm very confident that Donegal actually would have beat them to be honest had they have played them uh, but Donegal were allowed you know very comfortable fixtures you know Cavan was a difficult one opening game tricky game but they came through that then of course down Derry um, in reverse order there but and then of course eventually now Fermanagh and of course you know you can only beat what's in front of you so we can't knock Donegal too much but yeah, fantastic in this game. Paddy McBrearty, Ryan McHugh, um, very quick, very slick uh, football. And the Super Rights Championship will certainly benefit them. And depending on how that draw plays out, um, they could very well see themselves in an All Ireland semi final come the middle of August. Dublin, of course, they won very, very comfortably against Leash. Uh, Dublin in the first half were very sloppy, to be fair. They, they were very slow in possession, um, kicked a lot of wides, missed the penalty, of course, from Paul Mannion as well. Um, it didn't start, you know, exactly like, like that in the opening uh, four or five minutes. Of course, a goal from Kieran Kilkenny. Um, but Dublin were very poor. You know, Leash were staying in the game. Uh, that long ball up to Donny Kingston was proven very, very effective. Leash were good in midfield. Paul Kingston looked decent as well. But in the end, the second half, you know, Dublin's physicality, their athleticism, just pulled through, and Dublin were just far more better. Um, and you know, again, I don't think anybody was really surprised at how easily Dublin won this game in the end. Especially towards the end of the game, you could see Dublin very, very comfortable in possession. Hitting points over the bar with ease. Able to bring players like Jack McCaffrey off the bench. Cormac Costello, who made an impact. And Dublin's just got an array of talent. You know, you could probably put two Dublin teams on the pitch. Um, and they would both still win the Leinster Championship pretty comfortably. I suppose for Leash, you know... You can't read too much into this. They've still had a fantastic year so far, winning the Division 4 title, getting to a Leinster final. They've already exceeded their expectations. I suppose the main aim now is that they want to avoid one of the big boys in the next qualifier draw so that they can get to the Super Rights Championship. And I feel like if they were to do that, massive, massive achievement for them. And they would go to that Super Rights Championship, depending again on what side of the draw they fell on, with a bit of an opportunity as sort of outsiders. And... You know, I feel like Leash are the second best team in Leinster, in my opinion. I think they're better than Kildare, better than Carlo, obviously, as well, having beat them twice this year. So, not the worst result in the end for Leash. A lot to work on. And who knows, you know, if they can come back stronger next year. And, of course, in that qualifiers and potentially the Super 8s, we'll have to see how that goes. And what about Kerry, their victory over Cork? This was, you know, again, very, very comfortable from Kerry. They look very, very good at the moment. Certainly the number one challengers to Dublin this year. Um, I'd be very interested to see what happens when they play each other because I'm pretty confident they will play each other at some point in the all Ireland this year. They have to, whether it's an all Ireland final, whether it's a semi-final, or even in the Super 8 Championship potentially. Could end up playing each other a couple of times between now 
and the end of the campaign. And yeah, Kerry, they started a bit slow, you know, Cork came out, held the traps very, very early on, got a couple of goals, and then Cork just seemed to switch off. That was it. They just allowed Kerry to dominate, to kick points with ease, got themselves their own goal as well. Um, and yeah, Kerry were in control from there on in. You know, and they've got so many young players, but they've still got experience as well with the likes of Kieran Donaghy in the team. You know, kind of he's kind of like the, the shoulder for the young players to hang on. Um, and of course, David Clifford again, another fantastic performance. The O'Shea's looked very good as well in this game. And Kerry looking very, very strong. Just how easily they beat Cork. Um, I think for Cork, though, it's very worrying in my opinion. You know, 2 on 1 in the opening 10 minutes. And then, you know what, they hit three more points, I think, between then and the end of the game. Just very, very surprising. Cork, you know, this was probably the worst performance uh, from any of the provincial teams um, this year. And certainly for a long time, in my opinion, this was very, very poor. They just couldn't get into the game at all. And that's the thing about Cork. You just don't know what Cork is going to show up. Is it going to be a Cork that plays good, vibrant football? Or is it going to be a Cork that just doesn't really look bothered? And certainly, Cork football very very poor today um, and very very poor overall but going into the qualifiers again similar in some ways to Leash if they can avoid some of the big boys which is going to be difficult obviously but you know when you look at some of the teams that are coming through the, the, the qualifiers for example Leitrim, Clare who, who both won um, if they're still if, one, if either one of them are still around by the time the next qualifier draw takes place who knows Cork could land themselves in a Super 8 championship um, which again I think that would be a success for them so Work for Cork to do. As for Kerry, you know, again, I'd be very interested to see what happens when they play the likes of a Dublin, a Galway, and even a Mayo because they won't they won't have a team that's as poor as that in my opinion. So it'd be very interested, but nonetheless, very good result for Kerry. And Mayo, of course, they dig deep in the qualifiers against Tipperary. It was looking quite worrying at times for Mayo. It looked like this might be the day that they're, you know, run through the qualifiers was finally gonna end, you know, when you look past through the last couple of years. But Mayo, they just always find a way. And that's why I'm always very confident with Mayo when it comes to the qualifiers because they just seem to find a way, you know, even when they're playing terribly, they just find a way. Um, and, you know, they started pretty poorly. They were in the game a little bit, but Tipperary were looking very, very good, you know. Kicking points over the bar, Michael Quinlevin, Connor Sweeney, looking very, very strong. The way they were moving the ball, they looked more up for it. Mayo were slow, lethargic. Um, but then there was one key moment in the second half, around the 55th minute, uh, Tipperary were three points ahead and I think it felt the ball fell to Tommy Durkin it originally looked like he put the ball over for a point but it actually just looped over the Tipperary goalkeeper into the back of the net I'm not sure what happened with the goalkeeper I'm not sure why he didn't like at least make an attempt to try and stop it maybe he thought it was going over the bar as well it was very strange but that at that point the game was 111 to 111 and Tipperary from there on in just caved in they just they threw in the tail completely Mayo took over point after point from there on in and very disappointing in some ways from Tipperary because I feel like when that goal went in they just completely collapsed and I'm not sure you know why was it the where they too tired where they just you know really annoyed with themselves uh, frustration did it, or, or where Mayo just that good I'm not sure but in the end Mayo pulled through got the victory put themselves into the next round of the qualifiers a good result for them Tyrone seen off Carlo very easily Carlo's championship dream is obviously over now it was a tough draw. It was always going to be a tough draw for Carlo in this one. Felt like they needed to avoid Tyrone. They needed to play one of the lesser teams just to build a bit more confidence uh, going into the next game. But yeah, it was always going to be very difficult. Tyrone were very poor when they played Mead two weeks ago. They weren't going to be this poor this time around. They got the likes of Peter Hart back in the team who scored a penalty. And yeah, great victory in the end for Tyrone. Three goals um, and they just won very, very comfortably. Um, there were some other good victories as well. Kildare battled back against Longford. Big win for Kildare, in my opinion. I wasn't sure how they would do coming into this. You know, going away to Longford is a pretty tough one. But, you know, Kildare, two wins on the bounce now. Beating Derry, beating uh, Longford. And actually going into these qualifiers might have been the best thing for them. Because, again, you know, depending on who they get in the next qualifier round, who knows how far they could go. I don't expect them to be in the Super 8's Championship but they are moving in the right direction. They're showing signs that they're moving in the right direction. Had they lost against either Derry or Longford, would have been seriously worried, but good results for them in the end. Also good results for Armagh. They had a relatively close game with Sligo, but in the end pulled through, got the victory, 
um, and you know they're moving in the right direction as well. They were pretty good in the, the qualifiers last year, they went all the way to the All Ireland quarter finals, beating the likes of Kildare along the way, and it looks like they're you know on a similar path this time around. And um, there was also a surprise victory for Leitrim as well. What a huge victory that was! They beat Loud by 10 points actually. Um, very, very surprising for Leitrim. This was only their third ever qualifier victory, so yeah, huge congrats to Leitrim. Wins as well for Cavan, they're staying in the mix as well, which I think is pretty good because I think they had a good league campaign um, and they're you know continuing their flow, continuing their good football, which I think is good to see. Of course, another victory for Clare. Um, beaten awfully in the end again I, t I always felt like Clare were going to be the better team here and they pulled through getting a decent victory so yeah it's really starting to heat up it'll be very interesting to see now what happens in the qualifier draw tomorrow and obviously what happens you know with the remaining of the Super Ace Championship because obviously we have four teams there now already in Galway Dublin Kerry and of course Donegal I expect Ross Common to be there I'm not sure who else will be there I think you know the obvious picks would be, you know, Tyrone, Mayo, and then perhaps maybe uh, Cork, perhaps, you know, they, they would probably be the obvious picks, but we'll have to see how the draw plays out because it's very likely that either of those kind of teams could end up playing each other and one of the lesser teams could pull through. So we'll have to see how it pans out. But anyway, guys, that is going to be the end of the video here on the channel. If you have liked this video, if you enjoyed this kind of content, hit that subscribe button, hit a like, hit the notification bell as well. And yeah, lads, I'll talk to you all next time. All right.